But we are glad to be here. I uh, was hoping when I came down there, I told my wife, I said, I just want to, I just want to sit around and hear some preaching and things like that. I don't want to have to preach. And then <laughs> I got over to Matthews and he said, Dad was asking if you were going to preach over there. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was really, uh, in fact, I, I purposely didn't bring a suit or anything. <laughs> and, uh, but he said I had, I could go come this way. So. <laughs> I guess this morning I'm uh, not going to give you three points, four points, or five points in a poem. You'll have to put all the extra points. I've got one point. Amen. And you'll have to put all the rest of the points in it in the poem for yourself afterward. And I think it'll go quite a, quite well with what our brother has brought this morning. And uh, I guess if it was to have a title this morning, it would be... Uh, why creation is imperative to the gospel. The doctrine of creation is imperative to preaching Amen. the gospel. And I guess for most, you know, you, I guess you'd have to define how you do, or what you think the gospel is and how you define the gospel. And we have gotten to a, a, a day and age when we try to pack it into some tight little program right. so that we can tell people this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I do not believe that's what the gospel is. I believe that when the Lord said he chose the preaching of the cross and the, and the, and the, and the, and the power of preaching uh, and the gospel to save sinners, that he uses a portion of the gospel to save different ones in different ways. But the, to encompass all of the gospel in this little four-minute thing, I believe is a sin and wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, that, but that's beside the point. You can, you can see what you want. You can say what you want it is. But I, I, was, I was studying, you know, we have the four Gospels. And, and I was looking at the four Gospels, and I said, well, let's just look at how the Lord recorded things when he began to uh, uh, preach the Gospel. And, you know, and, and that, and, he, and when you get to Matthew, and it starts out, and, and in my Bible it says the Gospel according to Matthew, right? Mm -hmm. And so you look at it, and it says it's the book. It begins the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Amen. And so he began to talk about the gospel as, 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 and tell the story of the gospel and what the gospel was by beginning, the way I see it right there, with what? With David. Amen. So we can't say that the gospel is just the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ because we are supposed to be like children. I mean, if you tell a, ch a child a story... What do they always ask? Well, why is it this way? Or how, is, how come it's this way? But God's people never seem to ask that question. And when you ask that question, it's going to take you back, as we'll see hopefully today, all the way back to Genesis 1 Amen. and verse 1. You Amen. see what I mean? Because we have to have a reason of why we do things the way we do things. And who has the authority to tell us to do things that way? And so as we look at this here in Matthew, he says, I believe it starts with David. So you could say, well, that goes back to David. If you were to flip over to Mark in chapter 1, he says, in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as it is written in the prophets. Mm -hmm. And so Mark takes us back to the prophets. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? He, that's what he makes reference to. He says, as it was in the prophets. You get to Luke, and he says, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, <laughs> even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. So he goes later on, but he makes reference back to the things that he's believed before Jesus ever walked on the face of the earth. Right. You see what I mean? Because he says that that's believed in us. You see what I mean? So that they've already been taught that, and then they saw it with their eyes. They're, they're declaring it with their eyes what they saw, but it's what they believed from what they heard before. And then, as we know, the first three Gospels uh, are more of Jesus Christ as a man. And then you get over to the book of John, and you have Jesus Christ as deity Amen. Uh, or in his divine nature. And where does John take us to? The very first words in the book of John, in the Gospel of John, it says, in the beginning Amen. was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Amen. 
you know, our brother talked this morning, and he talked about there in Joel, he talked about that, that uh, polymer wormer and the locust uh, and the things like that and how the Lord used them. Does anybody ask? I mean, we, we, we proclaim to the world that the Lord has control of those, and he's a sovereign God, and he has power over those. Amen. We talk about the hurricane that might, uh, that, or the tornado that happened there in, in Nashville, and every day that I've been here, I've been, I've thought of those people and the loss of their lives and how it's great, you know, when we're out working and we haven't lost any loved ones and, and things like that. But God is the one that has power over that wind and that Amen. storm. And we believe that. We say God is sovereign. But if, if we deny creation or if we allow someone that denies creation to say that they can still preach the gospel, that's impossible. Amen. It, it cannot go together because it's, it, it is much like this. He is, uh, brother, the brother said, he's in charge. Amen. What, ask the question, what gives him the right to be in charge? You see what I mean? There has to be an authority. And in, in America today, everyone wants to defy authority. We have children want to defy authority. Right. Uh, people want to defy the authority of the church, the home. I mean, you name it. We get clear up into the higher powers. Right. I'm talking about President Trump. And they say, how can he get rid of this guy? And how can he do this? Well, he has the right to do that. He has the authority to do that. Amen. But then stop for a minute and say, where does he get the authority? Mm -hmm. Who gave him that authority? You see, that was the question. You know what I mean? Even the Pharisees in their time, they came to the Lord and they said, you know, who gave you the authority to be doing this when he stepped on the scene? Why don't we ask that question? Right. How does he have the authority and the right to tell the locust what to do, the worm what to do, the wind what to do, and uh, all of that? Why? Where does he get that? Well, he must get it because he created it. Amen. You see me? So we have a whole lot of organizations that have set a uh, system of worship. Right. Set up a system of worship. And it encompasses their little God. Now, I'm, 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 I'm polytheistic in, in the fact that the Bible says there's many gods. You see what I mean? Now, I'm monotheistic as far as uh, he is. You, you, you see, you right. can really get yourself in trouble here. You, there is only one God, but the Bible says there's gods many. You see what I mean? So think of it this way. If I was to set me up a system that I call a system of worship, and I, as all of the other nations, as we heard about from Israel, you know, going into other nations, he says, you serve other gods, right? Mm -hmm. They set up a system of worship to worship their God. If it's their God and they made it up, they have the right and the authority, you might say, to tell you how you what you have to do to worship this God, right? Mm -hmm. And if I was to set mine up, I would say, well, I, I think you should, you know, have the piano here, and you can only sing these kind of songs, and you can only preach this certain way, and you have to bow down, and you know, you heard about the Muslims that you were talking about this morning, they blow the trumpet, they bow a certain way. They have the right to tell you how to worship their God. You see what I mean? Yep. So they can, they have control of the method of worship. Right. But they don't have the authority to demand you to worship. Amen. But God Almighty has the authority You're right. to demand that we worship Him. Amen. There's a difference there. Amen. And that comes from the fact that he's the creator. Amen. Uh, I, uh, I could not even, even tell people that because the Lord, as far as they're concerned, you know, I look at them and they say, oh, we, we worship this way and you have to worship, you know, God this way. And, and even in, in Christianity, we have and I use that loosely, we have developed ways to worship God that are not the way God wants worship. Amen. And I'm, I'm, it's terrible to see the way God's churches are going. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
people leave, people go here, people go there for something better or something bigger or something, you know, more tasteful and everything like that. And we wonder why it's happening. But nobody wants to follow somebody that has authority to tell them how they're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what I always say is, you know, it's kind of nice to know that man, God tells man, I'm, I command you to, to do certain things, right? And they don't do it. Right. He can tell the wind to hit the ground. Amen. Take out those houses. That's it. He can dig into his resources and tell the, the rain to come down and flood an area. Mm -hmm. and you know what it does? Floods. It does that. Mm -hmm. It follows his command. It's right. obedient. He tells the, the locusts destroy. We get over to Revelation as we heard this morning. He tells them what to do. Uh, and, and, and what do they do? It says that there was, there was power given to them. Power given to them. And it, but, but only to a certain degree, right? right? Just the right amount. Not so that they could kill, but so they could do something else. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You ever stop and say, why, did, why, does, why is he granted that authority? Mm -hmm. What gives him the right? That's what I always say. When anybody comes up to me and says, this is the way it has to be done. Why does it have to be done that way, first right. of all? And then who gives you the right to say that it has to be done that way? Right. You see, John, he said, in the beginning was the word. I'm going to try to get back there before we, we go. i got to get back to John 1. And he says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And then he says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Yeah. Again, declaring his authority over that, but still, before he ever even went into all of that, those first six verses of the book of John are the most important verses you could say that are in the Bible. Because if God is not the creator of all of the universe and of mankind, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, if you don't have that foundation, you have nothing. Right. Because you can just go on and on and on and get clear out here to 2020 20, 20, and you can say, well, why is there a church? Mm -hmm. why, why do we have to have it set up the way we set it? Why do we have to worship the way we worship? And then after all that, we've got the method down. Why do we have to worship? Mm -hmm. See, the problem with it is, is most people, I believe, even in God's churches today, aren't worship. You're right. Amen. We're here to hear a sermon. We're here to see if somebody next to us is mad at us or likes us or doesn't like us or if their cooking's good or not good. You know what I mean? Or who, who knows what the reason might be. Or maybe it's just because that's what we've always done. Right. But who comes in the doors and say that I am commanded, God Almighty has the authority to demand that I worship him Amen. in truth. Amen. If we had that thought, we might come in here and worship in a different way. Right. You're right. I find that if I knew that he and truly understood the fact that he could make that worm do exactly what he wanted every single time. Amen. I'd be a little more considerate mm -hmm. when I walked into his house mm -hmm. as to how he wanted worship. You know, when he made man, he said, I made you. Mm -hmm. I can declare what, where you're going. You see what I mean? If, if there was no such thing as him being the creator, he would not have the right to choose who he was going to say. Right. Yeah. And who he was going to put in him. Mm -hmm. So you get a man that says, well, I don't know. I don't really know about creation. Or I don't really, you know, he's denied, he's denied that God has the right and the authority to put somebody in him. You're right. Amen. And that's why we have a world full of people that hate God Almighty's truth about who he's going to, to choose. That's it. Amen. 
We get over there later on in John in one, and, he, and where he says, you know, I, I, I'm going to choose. Do, do, do Christians ever ask who gave him that right? How does he have that authority? You go all the way back, and he says to Exodus chapter 20 when he put the Ten Commandments in a thing of stone. And I can get up and say, well, I don't like this one, and I don't like that one, and I think it should have been done another way. But the only thing I have control of is what's in my own little world. Mm -hmm. Which is what? Nothing, really. That's it. Because I have no control of anything. I, I, I don't even know what tomorrow is going to bring. Isn't that what the Lord says? Right. Amen. But when the Lord gets up and he says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, Amen. all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your body, He's the creator of that. Amen. He's the creator of every single one of those things. Your heart, your soul, your body, your mind. And when he demands that you worship him with all of your heart, you know what that leaves? That leaves no room for anything else. Amen. Amen. See, like, like, like one guy said, one preacher, he, he took this bucket. And he filled it up with rocks all the way to the top, big rocks. And he said, the bucket's full. That's all that the bucket will hold. And he said, that's how most people are with worshiping the Lord. Then he said, there's a few. And he took some sand and he poured it in around those rocks. And it took, man, he just kept dumping sand in around those big rocks. And he filled that bucket all the way up. And he said, man, there's a few more that think that that's all. When the Lord said, oh. Then he went over and he got some water. Mm -hmm. And he started down the water. He just kept taking water. Kept taking water. And then when he got that filled, you know what? There was no room for anything else. And so when the Lord says, love the Lord your God, he, can, and he wants it all. Amen. You, you know, there's no more time. One brother says, well, I'm going to miss church for this, or I'm going to miss church for that. I, I, I was talking to Brother Trescott last night. They had us down for dinner. And I could, by the way, I could have went down there and he wouldn't have made me preach. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and he said, he has people that come to services and come to the morning services, eat the dinner, and then leave and go to a ball game or a birthday party or something else. You know what they missed? They miss the fact that there's somebody in authority over them. Right. And it isn't the church. I mean, the church is an authority over but there's something higher and higher than that. Amen. It gives the church its authority. You know what I mean? Who has the right to tell the church how it's supposed to be? Or how it's supposed to operate? Or when it's supposed to operate? And to tell you and I that we must assemble ourselves together as the man, and, and not, you know, forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. That we have to assemble together. Who has that right to tell us? Amen. We're our own man. We can do what we want, right? Well, if he's not the creator, he doesn't have that right. Hmm. You see, only reason that he has the right and the authority to do that is because he made it. Amen. You know what? Uh, if, if he... Uh, if heaven wasn't made by him, then could he say, I want the sun to set back 10 degrees like he did in the tent? Right. If you and I weren't made by him, then how could he say, this night that soul should be required of you, that lost man? Right. If he wasn't good, he wouldn't have that authority. Amen. Someone would be able to step up in, in, in the thing and say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll take charge of this, and I don't think you should go there. But that's where man is today. Mm -hmm. They believe that they have control of their destiny. And they're going to continue to think that as long as they think God is the designer of worship mm -hmm. and not the uh, and not the one to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? When he says, worthy is the lamb, 
as they say to him in heaven, and, and he says that he deserves the worship and the praise, he can demand that mm -hmm. with authority. Amen. I can't tell you, you must, I'm going to be the God, you must worship me. Now, I can probably get some people to follow me, as cults do, and tell them, this is how we're going to do it, you know what I mean? I want everybody to bow down here five times, six times, seven times, but I can never demand that you do it. But God can be man. Amen. We worship Him. And that is because He is the Creator. Uh, when He, in, in Genesis, when He said uh, uh, to, uh, He says, So God created man in His own image. And created him male and, free, male and female created he them and God blessed them and God said replenish be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth and God said behold I have given you every herb bearing a seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree uh, in the which is the fruit of in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and so, and it was so. And God saw everything that, it, that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Mm -hmm. If we cannot believe that, how are we going to get over to Acts 16.31 where it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. You see, there's preachers that get up and they say, Well, that Philippian jailer, he walked out and he said, What must I do to be saved? And he says, And the only words that were ever said was, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So that's the gospel. And they say, Well, all you have to do is believe in Jesus or believe in what Christ did, and you're going to be saved. Is that the truth? Mm -hmm. That's not the truth. It can't be the truth. First of all, when Jesus Christ came preaching, and he, the, the very first thing you see when he came preaching, he says he came preaching the kingdom of God, and he says, repent and believe the gospel. He commands that a man repents. And then in Acts 16, 31, where he does, where the Apostle Paul is talking to the Philippian jailer, what does he say? Here comes a man that has repented. He's trembling in fear for his life. And he doesn't tell the man to believe in Jesus. Never does. I run into people every day of the week that believe in a God or believe in Jesus or say they put their faith in this. But that's not what it says. It says believe on. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big difference. <clears throat> you see, I can believe in a table being able to hold something up. But only until I put the weight on it. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Right. When he says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then your belief and your faith and everything you've got is on him. Mm -hmm. If you can't believe that he has the right to tell you to do that, the right to sustain it in life and everything else, how are you ever? going to put your whole weight and right. all of your life on him. Mm -hmm. You see, it's, it's no different than saying, you know, hang the picture on the wall, right? What do you do? The wall supports the picture. The picture's nothing without the wall holding it. You see what I mean? So belief on the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. isn't even is that simple because he says believe on the Lord. Who is the Lord? He's the one that's supreme. He's the one that's the creator. Amen. He's the one that began everything. He started everything. You can't get to the 
believe on Jesus and believe on Christ until you get believe on the Lord out of the way first. Amen. So he says, believe on the Lord, Philippian jailer, believe on Jesus, right. and believe on Christ. Now then when you get into it all and you start digging it out and you say, why well, most people believe on Christ because he's the one that died on a cross, right? He's the atoning one. He's the Messiah. But he didn't leave it there, did he? He started out where? Or John started out. Mm -hmm. In the beginning. If you don't have the Lord, if you don't have the foundation, if you don't have the man that's in authority, right? then who's Jesus? Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? If you don't get the Lord right, who's Jesus? He's no more than anybody else's little long-haired picture that's on the wall. Right. We can make him anything we want, and we have the right to make him anything we want. Mm -hmm. But the Lord says, Jesus is this certain thing. Amen. You can't believe on Jesus until you understand who the Lord is. Amen. You can't believe on Christ until you understand who Jesus is. Amen. The only begotten Son of God. So in my mind, if someone comes up and says, well, I believe in Jesus, or I let Jesus in my heart, or any of these kind of things, I'm like, I have to question whether they know the Lord. And then when someone comes up and says, well, I don't believe that God created everything. I don't believe he has power over everything. Mm. I, believe, I believe that just happened. Mm. That takes away all of the divinity, all of the authority Amen. from the Lord. I can see fully why no one would want to believe on the Lord mm -hmm. if he's not the creator. Right. He's no different than, any, than the other guy's God. That the Muslims say, bow down and worship him. He's just something that's out there. Right. But our Lord, and our God, and our Jesus, and our Christ, is the creator. Amen. Both of the universe, everything that we can see, all everything that was made, was made by him. That's the foundation. And if you're going to preach a gospel that doesn't have that in it, I don't believe it's a gospel. I, don't, I believe it's something people are feeling. Right. Or man naturally, man is built in them naturally to have to worship and to have a higher power. They, even atheists aren't really atheists. Right. They just say that. That's just a term they use. Because they want to deny the true and the living God. Amen. But they do. They either set themselves up or something else up. Mother nature or whoever, what they want to call it. As a higher power, a higher being. Some kind of, I guess you could use the modern definition of divinity. But it's not. Because divinity, divine, is only one supreme. The Amen. Lord. Uh, But if this guy can set it up and say it's this way, this guy can set it up and say it this way, and we have no foundation to say why he has the authority and the power to say it's my way. I demand it to be my way. Amen. I demand that you do it my way or I'll put you in hell. Mm. Amen. You see, if I make something, even though it's the Lord's material, I can't really create anything, but if I make something, I have the right to say, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Throw it away. Trash. Someone might come up and say, hey, 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 what are you doing? It's not yours, is it? Right. Then mine. And if we're going to understand who God really is, we have to see him as the creator of Amen. us. Amen. He can demand and has the right and the authority to tell us. Not only how we're supposed to worship, not only when we're supposed to worship, but the one and only thing we are Amen. supposed to worship. 
it's sad today, even in my own life, to see how many things can take away from loving the Lord your God with all of your heart and soul. Amen. Do you know how guilty we are? We can look at the other guy all day long and find all kinds of faults. Right. And we can sit there and look at oh man, look at those people. They think they're going to heaven. That's not what the Lord told us to do. Amen. The very, very first thing that he demands, and nothing has diminished from the law, not one bit, is to love the Lord your God Amen. with all of your heart, soul, body, and mind. You know what that leaves for anything else? Okay. <laughs> no, there's nothing left over. Right. I, uh, what, what are we doing? Amen. You see how far we've missed the boat? But if you're going to go out and you're going to preach to somebody and you're going to tell them, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, don't make this little figment that he's, even, even in sovereign grace, Baptist, we make this little thing that, well, it's just really easy. Just, just trust in what he said. You know what I mean? How are we going to trust in that? Mm -hmm. If we don't understand that the reason that the sun is there, the reason that the grass is there, you know what he says to them? He says, it's all gone. We heard about it this morning. The cattle and the sheep are mourning there. They, they, there's, no, there's nothing left to eat. Mm -hmm. He has control over that. Amen. If we can't recognize that, if we can't paint that picture for them, how are we ever going to tell them that he's the God that has authority over eternity? That's right. If we can't get him to be a God over this little teeny tiny earth that we think is so big and we worship. Mm -hmm. Amen, brother? Amen. Hopefully today we would consider, and I spend hours and hours thinking about it, and then I go the next day and I do the same things over and think the same way that I've been thinking. What God demands of us. Mm -hmm. yeah and his right to demand it. You see, you can go to work. I'm going to close here. When you go to work and the boss says, I want you to do this a certain way. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, I can do it that way. Do you know what he does? He says, I'm going to show you that I have the power and the authority to tell you how I want it done. <laughs> right. And you're either going to do it or I'm going to oust you. Right. The Lord has millions of rules. I'm not telling you anything new. I didn't come here to tell you anything new. Millions of rules, you might say, that he says you have to follow. Amen. All written right here in the book. But if you'll look at every single one of them, you know where they all begin? The verse I've been quoting over and over again. Mm -hmm. The very first one. Love the Lord your God. Amen. With everything that's in here. It's, there's not no room for anything else. I believe if we could truly bring ourselves to that point, even as one person, or one family, or one church, I believe God's holy spirit would move tremendously mm -hmm. amongst his people. But you can't start out over here because the pattern is you always have to have a foundation. Mm -hmm. You can't start over here and say, well, we're going to fix this problem by doing this, and we're going to fix this problem by doing this, and making this law and this regulation. That's the, what the government does. Right. They, they just keep making a new one and a new one and a new one and a new one. But it doesn't do anything. It has no, 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 no bite to it, you might say, because it doesn't have any authority or any foundation. Right. We must get back to the fact that God, what does he say? He says, I don't want you to be 
uh, in Philippians, uh, just from the simplicity mm -hmm. that's in Christ. You see what I mean? The simplicity that's in Christ is Amen. That he's the star. Mm -hmm. You see, if you don't try to put him in the middle, don't try to put him at the end, because I want those streets of gold over there. If we can't get him at the foundation as the creator. That's it. Right? Go ahead.